All right. Um, thanks for watching. As you can see here, we've got our set of points set up on a bit of a, a block board. Um, as you can see on the top here, we haven't put any scenery on yet, but we will. Um, what you can see there is uh, the track leads, and they are actually working track leads. We've got our fake little point motor here. Uh, even though we've got a needle that feeds through it, it looks like it drives it. It does not. We have our signal here that's made from our gentleman in Juni. Um, they're a great product, very fragile, but a great product. It is a New South Wales Government Railway signal. Um, we'll go through those indications shortly. What we have on the side here is an ESML key uh, to the railway people. They'll know that an ESML key can be removed to lock out a set of points or to manually operate the points if they need be. We have our point switch, which has three states, a normal reverse plus a transition light, um, which will flash when the points move. Um, but it's also there to tell you when the points are locked. And then we also have here a switch to command the signal. I hope, I hope you can see that all well enough. Um, so let's fire it up. It goes through a startup process to test the logic and test the system. The points are in reverse, so when I turn it on, it'll actually self-normalize. So there you go, the program set up. We've got our light on here that tells me that the points themselves are in normal. Uh, as everything is at the moment, it's an unoccupied track. Uh, the points have detection. Um, it's not looking beyond this set of points. That's a, that's a project for another day but uh, today's just to show you what this puppy can do. All right, so just to show you the basics with the switch row. So as you see, the flashing light, the transition and so forth um, comes across, it locks in, um, and they're well commanded at all times. So basically with that, we're telling the, the system it's a cobalt point motor, it's got a nice little slow throw on it, so it actually spends time, plus it's got internal switches that we can use to uh, to tell the computer um, when to when to lock in and so forth and when to cut the power. Um, so a basic one, call the signal, uh, points are set to clear, so when we call the signal, it's going to come out as a clear signal. Uh, now many ways to reset that, we could remove the ESML handle, I'll show you. So if someone did that in the field and removed the key, the signal would go back to stop. Let's clear it again. Okay, there we go. Um, the other way is to simulate a track train being actually put off the track, and I'll reach across and grab that. So if we drop the track out, it drops back to stop. I'll show that again. So obviously my nail here is, all, is representing a train on the track. And there you go. Same thing. When I drop the track at the normal state, it will lock the points, so I don't have any throw on the points. Um, this is real-world scenario, so this could work on a model railway layout. Uh, so I'll throw it across again. And now again we can throw another signal indication because it's on the turnout. And there you go. That's the New South Wales caution turnout there. Uh, Alright, so again we can throw it back to stop by simulating our train and the other one to show is when the signal's called again points are locked I can't throw them um, so if we press the button one more time we'll actually get a, um, a medium turnout there so the signal's actually showing a New South Wales medium turnout um, same way to reset we can just put this back up and put the signal back to stop so I uh, it's been a long road. There's a lot of people been involved in this project. I thank you very much and uh, appreciate any feedback. Thank you.